Welcome back. Uh, in this part of the recording, we're going to look at handling points three, four, and five. Okay, so we're going to look at what happens if we have missing data and we want SPSS to record the missing data, and then the idea of including a subject ID, which is something that's quite important when it comes to um, data sets, in particular with SPSS, and I'll show you why. And then the other thing then would be is some of the pre-assigned properties of measurements that when they were imported into SPSS from Excel, how they might necessarily have been imported in the format that we want them actually in. Okay, so if we go to the SPSS file that we have, first I suppose what I mainly want to look at here is I want to look at our fourth question. So with our fourth question here, we have this is on average how many hours a week would you spend on the Wi-Fi or a day would you spend on a Wi-Fi? So um, what we can just see here, and again, this all this data was just randomly uh, generated uh, in Excel. But what you can see here is we have two missing values. So I just want to show you how do we put together some syntax that can handle the missing data. Now, what you'll find, and I would have mentioned this in the previous recording, there's often more than one way of doing an operation within SPSS. So uh, I'm just going to show you a, a, one ap a approach that I find useful. Uh, you might decide look, that you like that approach, or you might decide that you actually saw um, another approach previously and you prefer to stick with that. Either way, I think it, it's okay. The main thing is when you're doing it that you have your syntax. That would be really it, okay? That's what I would hope would be the main learnings from this uh, type of recording. Okay, so we want to basically look at uh, assigning missing values here to the two uh, respondents that didn't uh, give us information for the fourth question. So we've been up to the transform before, okay, we looked at the transform for the auto recode, which is where we were converting string to numeric. We looked at the transform of recode into the same variable where we were reassigning the values for a, uh, for a particular measurement. Now what I'm going to just do is something different is recode into a different variable. Okay, so if we're going to recode into a different variable, what we look at here is our fourth question, which is on average how many hours a day do you spend on the Wi-Fi? So I'm going to put that across into the window. Now we're creating a new measurement, so we want to give it the new measurement a name. So I, I suppose to be consistent with um, the other new measurements we created, we call them Q1, two, Q2, Q3. What we'll do here is we'll call this Q4. So that's the name, which is kind of the abbreviation. This is what we'd actually see in the syntax when we when, when we are generating syntax. Then you have your label, which is your full description that when you're, you're uh, outputting a graph or a table, this, these would be the labels to the axes or the heading to the table. So I'm just going to type in how many and do dot, 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 and I'm sure you can finish that bit off then on yourselves. So the label would be how many hours on average do you spend on Wi-Fi a day? So I'm going to press change. Okay, so that's fine. So it's updated up here. Then we're going to look at the old and new values. So a few ways of doing this again, but what we're ma well, our main focus here is looking at trying to handle the missing values. Okay, so what we can see here as an option is system or user missing. So I'm going to select that. This is basically our blank cells. What do we do with our blank cells? So I, I want to basically code that as 999. Now you can code it as anything you want, I suppose. The main thing is you're not going to code it as a number that's already there. So we're looking at the, on average, how many hours does a person spend on Wi-Fi per day. So realistically, you're looking at between 0 to 24, but obviously even 24 is obviously a strange answer to get. So if you're going to apply a missing value, a code to a missing value, you would expect you'd use something beyond that number. So 999 is a nice number to use, so I'm just going to do that. Then I suppose we're going to re we're recording old into new. So what do we want to do with all the other values? So all the other values, we want to basically copy them. Okay, we don't want to change any of the other values. So the main thing we're changing is the missing values to be 999. Press add, press continue, press paste, because we want to update our syntax. So we come to our syntax and here we have a bit of new code. Okay, so we'll put in a heading to this or uh, sorry, a comment. So what we do is we recode a uh, question or uh, to cater for missing data, something like that. Okay, again, it doesn't really matter. It's just something that kind of makes sense to you. Okay, I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to run it by pressing Control R. When you run it, we have the, a bit of an update in our output window. We come back to our SPSS file. We can see in the SPSS file now we have a new question four, and we can see here that the two missings are now are being coded as 999. Okay, if we come back over here to the variable view. With the variable view, so we can see we have a new question four. Okay, so it's an updated question four. You can see that the label was how many dot 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 because I just simply just didn't type in all the, the text for that. 
we don't have any values for this we don't need any values the only place you need values is where you're applying codes okay so we ultimately is where you've categories so we had three we categories for question one question two question three question four was a ratio measurement so there was no category for that now the one thing that is missing from this is the actual classification classification of missing if you look at our new question one two and three you can see here spss is recognizing that four is a missing value six is a missing value four here is a missing value we wanted to recognize that 999 is actually not how many hours somebody was on the wi-fi that that actually is a missing value we need spss to recognize that if it doesn't recognize that it's going to be treating 999 as a valid number which obviously is just going to be upsetting all our uh, uh, statistics so what we'd like to do traditionally is we come in here and we just basically type in 999 somewhere okay that's what we'd like but the same old story there is no track record of doing that we can see here that there's no paste option so if there's no paste option that ultimately means in our syntax uh, file we need to actually type it up manually okay and again whenever you have to type up something manually it, it there is not a whole lot to it but obviously it's just it's just to be aware of it okay and look that's hopefully where this recording is of use to you all right, so what we can see here is question four was recorded, which is perfect, but it, SPSS doesn't know that the 999 is actually missing, so we'll put in a comment, let, sorry, let SPSS know that 999 is a missing value. Now, obviously, I'm being very uh, long-winded with the comment, but it's just nearly to show the purpose of what we're trying to do. Okay, so we're looking at tr trying to focus on something with missing, and if we start typing in missing, we come across missing values. And again, it's it's not that any of these kind of functions here will be uh, overly obvious. This is where you'd go onto a search engine, type in SPSS syntax for missing values, and you'd get prompted to something like this. Okay, or hopefully this is where the recording is good. Um, when you look at the missing values, what are you trying to assign missing values to? Well, we're trying to assign it to our new question four, so we need to tell SPSS what measurement it is. So it's our question four measurement. Then we need to tell SPSS what code we're we using. Well, we're using the 999, so in brackets, we put in 999. Okay, so if you think of the logic test, we're looking at missing values for question four, and the missing value is going to be 999. We'll highlight that, press Control R. And if we press Control R, then we'll come back in here and we'll see, look, 999 is now set as a missing value. And that's really what we want, okay? We wanted that to be missing. Now, hopefully, you might be able to spot here that the decimal places have increased up to two decimal places. Now, we don't need those two decimal places. And that's what uh, we look at in two points uh, in a, a, a few moments, I suppose, is how do we fix up the decimal places? Again, the old-fashioned way of doing it is you could just change it here. But I just want to show you the syntax of changing it, okay? So this is where we are at the moment. Uh, so that's perfect. So we've looked at addressing the uh, how do we handle missing data. So we've handled the missing data, but what we can see comes from that is we need to prompt or remind SPSS that a certain number that we're using as missing data is actually missing data. Okay. Uh, the next thing we're going to look at doing is assigning a subject ID. So what was very useful when we look at our SPSS file here in the data view, we don't actually have any subject ID. Like we don't know that this first subject, who's a male, who said fair about his rating of the uh, Wi-Fi, who's greater than 30 years old and didn't respond to the question four, we don't know that that's our first person. Now you could look over here and say, oh, it has the one here, and then it has the two. But these one, two, three, they, they're just your row numbers. That is not anything to do with a subject ID or a case number. And it's quite useful that you have a kind of a tracking mechanism to who each person is. And the reason for that is, just say if you happen to resort your data for some reason, that you want to always have kind of, I suppose, a measurement that you can put it back into its original form. Okay, so often that is very useful is that you have a case number or a subject ID measurement included, okay? And that's what this point is about. So we're going to transform, and this time, and so you can see all this manipulation we're doing, we're often going to transform. We're going to transform, and this time we're looking to compute a variable. Okay, we're looking to compute a variable. Now we have 94 subjects, so basically what I want is a new column of uh, title is going to be case number, that's what we're going to call it, and number is going to go from 1 down to 94. That's what we're looking for. Okay, so case number is what I'm going to call it. I have this numeric expression. Uh, if we're going to select go into the function group all. We can really select the function group all. We can come down to case number, do the up arrow, boom, that's it. It gives a bit of a blurb to what it is, but ultimately this is what we want. We'll press paste, so we have a track record of that step. we we'll come to our syntax. We'll throw in a comment. So again, by pressing paste, that only just generates the syntax. It doesn't, um, I suppose, it doesn't um, run the syntax. Okay, so we're assigning, assigning a subject ID number or something, a subject ID 
just leave it like that. Press full stop to close off the comment, highlight this, press control R. When we press control R then, what we can see now is, look, we have a new case number. Now, this is my only thing then with this is if I was having a subject ID or a case number, I generally like that to be at the start. I like, to, I just think it makes more sense with the data set. You can obviously also see with the data set here, we have duplications. Now we have the data in its raw case and we have the data coded for question one, two, three, four. So we want to tidy that up as well, I would feel. And uh, that's what one of the later points we'll be addressing as well. Okay, so when, just to look at this then, so where we're going, going with this then, is what we can just see a few minor issues then with this is the case uh, i would look at the decimal places potentially here we just maybe want to tidy them up to zero decimal places now you might say no you're happy you don't need to tidy them up, and that's absolutely fine i'm just going to show you the syntax to do it i'm going to just show you the syntax of how if you wanted to change a label like we can see here for our question one the question uh, the label to it is what is your gender now I, I mean you don't necessarily need the whole label to be what is your gender the label could simply be gender Okay, so you could do something like that. So I'm just going to show you how do we change the label. So, I mean, we obviously could just type it in there, but again, there's no track record. And then finally, these uh, levels of measurement that we have down here, SPSS is defaulted giving them to nominal when we imported them from Excel. But we know question one is nominal, so that's actually fine. Question two is ordinal. Question three and question four are interval and ratio. And what SPSS treats, how SPSS treats interval and ratio is they cause them scale. And these are things that we should fix up. And again, these are small things that we could fix up here we, for the question two. We could do a drop down menu and select ordinal. But again, there's no track record of that. There's no diary. There's no transparency. So it's just to do the script for those three things. And that's just the last part to this uh, bit of uh, recording is how do we update a label if we want to do it? How do we update the levels of measurement if we're interested in doing that? And how do we update the decimal places? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually put together the syntax for those three all in one go, and then we're going to run it off all in one go. Okay. So the first thing we will do is we look at sure we go from we go from uh, right to left. Okay. So I'll first look at the levels of measurement. Okay. So going to come to the syntax, we'll put in a comment. We'll say change levels of measurement. Okay. Measurement. Okay. Full stop. So what we're going to look at there, so we're looking at the variable level in this case, okay, so we'll type in variable, and then we're looking at level, so I typed in variable wrong, I-A-B-L-E, and then we're looking at the level, so you can see SPSS then prompts us, you, as you can see I just lost the prompt there, but I'll just show you there, so you can see here, look, variable level, so we'll click that, then you have to say what question are you focusing on, well, we're happy with question one, so question two is the first one we want to fix up, we want to change question two, and we want to change it, and in brackets we do type in ordinal. Okay, we want to change it to ordinal. So you can see the brackets is the notation that we use. You can see we did the same thing up here for the missing values. Then we come on to a new line. Now we could type in variable level again, but there's a shorter way of doing that. We don't need to write in the same wording again because it'll, SPSS will treat it that we are using that. Okay. So if we just do a forward slash, now we could say question three and question four. So we can do both in one go. So if we had a couple of measurements that we wanted to assign as ordinal, we don't have to do them all individually. We can do it all in one go. Here we've question three and question four. They're both defined as nominal in, in our uh, variable view at the moment. We want to change them to scale. So I'm going to just say question three, question four, and then in brackets, I'm going to put in scale. Okay, and that will update them. I don't have to worry about the case number, the case number, I'm just going to move that. I don't have to worry about the case number, the case number is already a scale, and question one is already nominal, so I don't have to worry about updating them. Okay. The next thing, I won't run that off, it will basically just update and I'll run it off at the very end. So the next thing is, if you wanted to rename a label. Okay, and I'll just do one label just as an illustration, which you'll start seeing kind of the pattern with how the, all these um, functions are working. So we're looking at value, a variable label, sorry, this time, variable labels you can see here third one down when we start putting it in and what variable label do we want to address well we want to address question one so you can see kind of the structure is quite similar you mentioned the measurement that you're focusing on and then what how do you want to rename it well i suppose we want to call it gender or something like that so in under a, an apostrophe you can state gender okay and that will just update the label for that question one okay and then the last thing we look at here is just where we want to maybe just change the decimal places to um, our question four and the case number. Okay, if we wanted to, now you might want to do this, okay? So we could just say, title this as change decimal places. Now, when you change the decimal places, you actually have to focus on the width as well. So if we look at this here, the two things that kind of go together, the width, which is basically how many characters you're going to have for your name over here, it defaults to eight in both these cases here. 
if we want to change the decimal places, we just have to kind of allow for the width here. Now, we don't have to change it. We can leave it as 8 if we wanted to. Uh, but when we're looking at changing the decimal places, we also just need to mention the width, whether we're changing it or not changing it doesn't matter. Okay? So you'll see what I mean here now in a second. So we're looking at formats in this case. Okay? So formats is what we're looking at here. Um, I never see the way it stayed faded there. That's because I just never did the full stop at the end of the comment. So now we have formats, and we're looking for question 4 and case num. Okay, so it's, it is case sensitive, so you just be careful with that. So we're looking at changing question 4 and case num. We want to basically have it as zero decimal places. So in brackets, you do F. This is kind of note, the notation we use for the, um, the width. Okay, so the width is the first thing. So just say it's down as 8 at the moment. Okay, so I'm just going to change it to something wider so we can make it very obvious so you can see it. I'm just going to change it to 16. Now, there was absolutely nothing wrong with the width as it was. I'm only changing this as an illustration. Really, I'd probably, I would actually just leave it alone, only that I'm doing a recording and I'm just showing you what the syntax does. Then you do a full stop, as in like a decimal point, and then the next number that you put in relates to the how many decimal places you want. So we want zero decimal places. We close the bracket. Okay, so if we look at that, what have we done here is we have updated the levels. Okay, that's what we said. We renamed a label and we've changed the decimal places. So that's all our new syntax. We have only typed it. We haven't actually run it. So I'm going to highlight that. Press Control R. When we press Control R, then you can see that we've a bit of kind of commentary kind of going in here into our nar uh, into the output. Okay, so let's come to our SPSS file to see has it all worked. Well, here we look. If you look at the levels of measurement, nominal, we didn't change that. Ordinal, scale, scale. That's perfect. The next thing we changed was the label. Here we have it. Look there. This changed to gender. And the other thing then we changed was the decimal places. We wanted them to be zero. And I just, as an illustration, I showed you, showed you the width as well. So we changed the width there to be 16. Now, that wasn't really a requirement. That was just more of an illustration. The decimal places was something as a requirement. Now, you could maybe feel look, that this is overkill, all this syntax. But you, you'll see now, we will do one more, there will be one more recording which will address the last couple of points and you'll just see the beauty of the syntax then, when it, how, how it all pulls together at the very end. But hopefully you can nearly see the beauty of it at the moment, okay? So we're just going to leave it there for this one and we'll come back for a fourth and it'll be a short uh, recording on just looking at if we want to delete the variables because we have a couple of duplicates now. We might want to reorder our variables and then at the very end we want to save our data set. Now what we've been saving on a rolling basis here is we've been saving the syntax and actually I should just do here I just save the syntax so we've been saving the syntax which I was, which is really important for us to save we actually haven't saved the data set yet and I'm purposely leaving that okay because I want you to show you a bit of uh, syntax that you do that okay so if you come back uh, in, to the fourth part of this you'll see that we're just going to cover these last three points okay talk to you soon bye now